Okay, now we, we're going back to the same basic threat, um, and, and this threat will work well whether the gun's pointed down here or whether it's pointed up there. Uh, I'm raising my hands again, except this time I'm going to use my left hand rather than my right hand, okay? I'm going to clear it this way, like that. The major difference here is I'm not going for the gun. The right hand one is going for the gun, uh, or the pistol, or the revolver. Uh, um, this one takes control of the hand, so obviously you can't use this technique with a knife unless you prepare to get really badly cut. Um, so with a knife we tend to use this technique which in Japanese is called korigeshi, which means a wrist counter. And, and, and essentially it's my left hand coming up deflecting uh, until my thumb reaches the third knuckle, then I'm grabbing, this hand's coming in, I'm pointing it towards him and I'm taking it down in such a way that it's going to result in me again controlling the weapon, uh, my finger on the trigger and the whole thing ends right here. Or I can disarm. I've still got it on here and uh, end the situation like that. Korigeshi from behind. I'm going to clear it. Oh, sorry, can be between my shoulder blades. Korigeshi from behind. I'm going to clear it and take it down. Let's do it from this side. Um, so you can see what happens. Clearing here, taking control. Finishing it off. Easy disarm. If the gun is pushed right up against me, uh, up against my chest, I can simply turn my body to get out of the, uh, to clear the, the, the trajectory path of the bullet, come up, trap here, turn towards him, becomes unsustainable for him. Again, my small circle jiu-jitsu is coming in very nicely for me at this point in time. Okay? Sorry about that, Joe. Watch again. Here, I've got control of the weapon. Um, uh, in a situation, um, in a situation like this, I can bring this hand. Ooh, sorry. In, and take him out like that. As you can see, my small circle jujitsu is still very much in play here. Um, coming from behind again, if, uh, I don't, if I don't turn the correct way, if I turn the incorrect way, I can just use that exact same technique that I used when the gun was pointed at to me from the side. So it makes no difference whether I'm coming in from the side or whether I'm coming in from the back. So a weapon in my back, I can clear here. Just by turning my body, clearing the weapon, taking control, moving in, strike, strike, reaching behind, pulling down, up comes the knee. Bring in the elbow, finish the technique right there. Okay, sometimes the weapon might be concealed in the pants, maybe covered by a t-shirt. He doesn't want to wave the weapon around in public or a semi-public situation. In this instance, I'm going to control the weapon by grabbing the gun hand uh, with my right hand to his right hand. My left hand is going to control the elbow joint. I'm then going to sweep him uh, in, a, in, a, in a major outer sweep. In this case, I'm going to sweep him over here just so that you can see him coming down. I'm then going to push this down towards the ground, creating this control situation with my hand. This allows me to disarm him and take control of the weapon. Yeah, out it goes, take control, and the weapon is done. Now we're going to deal with hand to hand combat with edged weapons. It's where someone's threatening you or actually attacking you uh, with a knife. Again, 
you need to repeat uh, a lot of these techniques over and over so that they become programmed into your into your body. And we're now going to go on to knife techniques, and that is basically hand-to-hand -hand combat with edged weapons, which is uh, uh, a very dangerous uh, form of, uh, of fighting. We're going to uh, deal with various types of attacks, slashes, and stabbing situations. In, in our style, um, we like to take control of the weapon. And, uh, and so when somebody, again, as I said right at the beginning, if somebody attacks you, either with a, a slashing motion uh, or a thrusting, stabbing uh, motion, uh, we will show you how to respond to those types of actual attacks or simply situations where the person is just threatening you. Um, and, and so you can deal with both threats and actual attacks or ambushes. Uh, somebody jumps out from behind a bush and tries to stab you. Different uh, criminals seem to have different modus operandi. Some criminals uh, will stab you first and then rob you. Uh, others will threaten first and, and, uh, and get you to disclose the whereabouts of your safe or your valuables. Um, in other instance, um, you need to be able to be empowered and deal with whatever that particular threat is. So we're going to go through the various techniques now. In this first technique, um, I'm going to teach you what's probably, uh, we're going to revise, should I say, what's probably going to be the, the most useful technique that you will learn out of this seminar, and that is the wrist counter. Okay? The wrist counter works very well, uh, whether a threat or an attack is coming higher, or whether a threat or attack is coming low down. It works both ways, all right? In, uh, in our particular style of fighting, it, it, you need to understand the difference between your fingers being up on top or your fingers being below or down, okay? With this first technique, we're going to deal fingers up on top. And here, I'm going to take control of the weapon with one hand, bring my other hand in, my fingers are going to run along the top of his fingers, the palm of my hand pushing down on my thumb, and I can take him straight down to the ground. And finish. Okay? Or I can roll him over and disarm right there. Still controlling the hand. In a different response, see, once I've got both my hands to this knife, it's now my knife, as I take him down, his neck is going to come in close. At this point, I can reverse, slice the neck, stab, stab, and then take him down and take over the knife. When he's coming with a lower thrust, I can deflect down here. Notice my fingers are on top of his hand. Grab and bring this hand in, turn, and perform the end game. Coming uh, with an overhead attack, block here, take control, and again, exactly the same motion. When he's Pointing the knife into my back, again, reflect, take control, and finish. Or, disarm it. Here we have a series of straight arm locks. In this the first one, Jared's going to use his armpit uh, to put an arm bar onto the attacker. And then once he's got the attacker in this position, he can disarm him by pushing the blunt edge of the knife away. And now he's controlling the weapon. You'll notice in almost all of our techniques, the weapon ends up with the defender rather than with the attacker. Watch this again. We'll slowly take it a little bit faster. Uh, a rising thrust from down below 
it's obviously not possible for Jared to do the same technique that he's just done. So in this kind of, of low uh, upward thrusting motion where he's coming for the lower belly, Jared is going to use a blocking motion and then turn it into a, either a bent arm lock or a straight arm lock. Okay, in this next attack, Malcolm's going to come with a, with a thrust towards my belly, um, which I'm going to kind of block and accept with a, an X block. Notice my right hand's the one on top, my left hand's at the bottom. At this point, my left hand is going to reach underneath and trapping his wrist inside the crook of my uh, arm, I'm going to put him into a straight arm lock there. So I'm pushing down here, I'm lifting up slightly there, it drops his head down here, I can come in with the knee, take control of him here. If I want to, I can disarm him, put in pressure on the back of the knife to take it out of his hand and use the knife against him. Okay, let's just do that one again, a little bit faster this time. Yeah, just to show you how fast this can actually be used in actual combat. So as he comes in, notice I'm not being passive, I'm moving my big fat tummy out of the way. So as I block, I also create this space here. My belly was there, my belly is now that much further away. So there's a certain amount of body movement as I accept his technique. Um, you'll notice some people have different quirks. I like to put a straight arm lock on. Jared likes to turn it into a bent arm lock, slightly twisting motion more cradling it like you're holding a baby, turning it into a bent arm lock, I can take him all the way down to the ground and disarm him here. Okay, in this instance we, we're dealing with a, a threat uh, where the person has got a knife to my throat literally and, uh, and obviously the dangerous part of the uh, or where the damage can be done here is when the knife moves in that direction. So I have to stop that from happening to me immediately. I use my right hand and I bring it up like a policeman stopping the traffic. I'm stopping that motion of the knife like this. Try and do that, slash me. He can't because I'm controlling it now. Okay. I then turn my shoulders away so that I'm pushing into his chest with the one hand, with one shoulder, and the other chest. Uh, I've moved his arm slightly out. This creates a gap over here. My left hand comes into that gap, and now. The golden rule, I've got both my hands on the weapon, it's now my weapon, it's no longer his. In order for me to use this weapon on him now, I need to get my head away, which I do by ducking under his armpit here, and then I've got the full power of my whole body to bring the weapon in and in and in again. Okay, once again, the dangerous uh, technique here would be this slashing motion, which I need to prevent from happening by bringing my right hand up like a policeman stopping the traffic, I stop that motion here. He cannot do that motion against my neck. The only thing he can do now is pull the knife into me. So I counter that by turning my body sideways, thereby pushing his forearm away, my other shoulders against his chest, creating a little gap here for me to put my left hand up and with both of my hands now take control of the knife. It's now more my knife than it is his knife. And I drop my head up from under his armpit and using my whole body, I can now thrust his own knife into him without me even touching the knife. It is now my weapon and no longer his weapon. Okay, when it when it comes to combat with edged weapons, uh, there are only really two types of attack that can occur, uh, whether you're using a samurai sword or whether you're using a pen knife, and that is slashing motions uh, or stabbing or thrusting motions, okay, stabbing and thrusting, whether it's with a reverse blade or whether it's with a straight forward uh, grip like that. And one needs to learn to deal with either slashes or stabs, okay? Um, in this first technique we're going to do, we're going to deal with a basic baseball bat swing type of slash, which comes from up there and comes down there, okay? This is a very common form of attack. It would be the kind of attack that would occur if he was, had a panga in his hand, uh, or whether he uh, 
had a, 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 a hunting knife like this in his hand. Okay. How we, what we do now is we receive. Remember, he's giving me this thing. I need to be able to receive it in order to take control of it. I'm going to receive it with my palm out and my thumb down like that. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether I to get it down there or whether I catch it here. Do not try and catch it like this because in this instance it's only my thumb that's in between that's saving my life at this point. If he manages to work his way through the thumb whereas here it's my whole arm. Okay so in the in the darkness of the night or he might it might be a very fast and you basically got to have that reaction of there. Okay and then you've got to guide this thing down to a point where you can take control. And as I've said once before, once both my hands are here, it's now my knife. I can take it through here and I can break the arm and disarm him at this point. Or, so essentially what I do is I accept it, take control and now redirect. I'm pushing up here, down there, break the arm, disarm and use the knife against him. Okay. Okay. Once again, we've got that same slashing attack, the same accepting, except my, I'm going to respond differently now. I'm going to step in and use my elbow to strike his floating ribs. Step down, drop my body, and break his arm at this point. In the previous technique, I went outside of him here. Yeah and broke his arm here. Now I'm on the inside of him, breaking his arm there, having stepped in this way. Yeah, stepping in, strike, strike, break. Disarm. Now we're gonna deal with a, uh, a, a stabbing attack, similar to the one out of the Saka movie. He's going to come in and stab me like this and I am going to basically defend myself by blocking with my left hand here. My right hand is going to reach underneath his armpit and throw him down in a bent arm lock situation. Yeah, okay. I can control him very nicely in this situation, trapping the arm and the knife hand into there. Once again, maybe change the angle slightly if you can come in from here. There, reach under here, create the bend, take control, and done. finish off lock, strike. Okay, I'm going to just deal with some basic uh, sideways slashing motions. Uh, the first slashing motion, I'm going to move my body out of the way like this to avoid it. And then he's immediately going to come back for a second slash, which offers me the opportunity that I need to accept the knife and take control of the situation. The first slash I managed to avoid, the second one I blocked here, bringing my left arm in um, as, a, as a long stop and my right hand in as a short stop. Okay, I then deflected this over my head and use my right hand to come in and